Hey, ho, let's go. Here we are with chapter number six and lesson number two. This lesson is going to focus on some of the rules of indices, which we would have learned about last year. Really, we're doing that because you have to be an absolute expert at indices before we move on with the differentiation chapter. So if you think back to last year, we learned some of these rules. We had a to the power of zero if you have any number to the power of zero. So Hannah, what was it? One. Yes, well done. Anything to the power of zero is one. If you have a to the power of negative m, remember you can write that as a to the power of negative m over one. And if you want to change an index from a negative to a positive or vice versa, you move the base and the index from the top of the fraction to the bottom or vice versa. So if you move the a to the negative m to the bottom, on the top you'd be left with one, you wouldn't be left with zero and a to the power of negative m would move to the bottom, but magically, abracadabra, the negative m would change to a positive m, and that's how you change an index from a negative to a positive, or vice versa. If you have the nth root of a to the power of m, remember, you can write that as a fractional index. I showed you all about flower power when we did this last year. Remember, if you have a pretty little flower, on the bottom of the flower you have the root, which means the root here is n, and on the bottom of your fraction then you'll have a to the power of something over n. n goes in the bottom because it's a root. And at the top of a flower, what have you got? Well, that's the flower, which rhymes with power. And the power here is a to the power of m. So the power goes on top because the flower is on top. So that was flower power. Or if you're from Northern Ireland, it may be flower power. But that's how you would write um, it. If you have a to the power of m times a to the power of n, remember, the trick is, you just add your indices. It's a quick way of doing it. If you divide, so a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n, you just subtract the indices. And if you end up with a to the power of m to the power of n, so if it's to the power of to the power of, all you do is you multiply them together. So a to the power of m times n. Let's try some examples then. So example one, write these with uh, positive indices. So, x to the power of negative 2, remember, what you want to do is you're changing the index from a negative to a positive, so you're thinking about this rule here. So to do it, you want to move the base and the index to the bottom of the fraction, so you can uh, change the index. So really, in the top, you would be left with 1, and in the bottom, you'd have x to the power of, and the index will change from a negative 2 to a positive 2. Awesome. Next one, if you have 4 over x to the power of negative 3, remember you want to move the base and the index, so x to the power of negative 3 from the bottom up to the top. So it would go with the 4, so you'd have 4x to the power of, and the index would change from a negative 3 to a positive 3, and that is what you would end up with. Let's try some more examples. For these examples too, write them in the form of ax to the power of n. So for these, we don't want x to be in the bottom of a fraction. We're also not wanting any square root signs. We're wanting it as x to the power of something. So the first one, to get x from the bottom of a fraction up to the top. Max, how would you go about doing that? Perfectly right, you would move it to the top. So we'd end up with 1x, or just x, to the power of negative 5. Remember the index changes from a positive to a negative. With this one, we've got 2 over 7, and then you've got an x on the bottom as well. Well, the 2 sevenths will stay as 2 sevenths, and it's the x that will move from the bottom to the top. Just now it's x to the power of 1, so when you move that up to the top, it will become x to the power of negative 1, but the 2 and the 7 will stay exactly where they are. It's only the base and the index that will move. You could also uh, write it a different way. Here we're asked to write it as ax to the power of n. So in other words, some number times x to the power of n. The number here you have is 2 over 7. So you can just take that to the side, write it as 2 sevenths, and you've got the x to the power of negative 1. Woohoo! And that's how you do it. 
Next one, the fourth root of x. For this one here, this is where you're thinking about your flower power. So the root here is the fourth root, and the roots are on the bottom. So you're going to write that with a fractional index, and the four will go on the bottom. And on the top, well, it's just x to the power of one. So the power is one, and that's x to the power of one quarter. The next one here looks pure mental. How would you go about doing this one? Well, the five and the nine would stay exactly where they are. Five stays there, nine stays there. But it's this cube root of x squared that's probably making it look very confusing. So the way you can do that is just think again back to your flower power. So we've got three outside, that's the third root, and the roots go in the bottom, so it'll be x to the power of, and the power is two. So x to the power of two-thirds. Again, you could always rewrite that one. We are asked to write it in the form of some number x to the power of n. So keep the five-ninths where they are. And the x to the power of ne uh, two-thirds, if you take that up to the top, it'll become x to the power of negative two-thirds. And you could just put it at the side. So it's x to the power of negative two-thirds. And that would be your answer. You would, before you take it outside, you have to move it up to the top. Because here, it means 5 nines times that. And if it was left in the bottom, it really means 5 divided by that x to the power of 2 thirds. So you have to move it up to the top, first of all. Let's try one more set of examples. Simplifying 4m to the power of negative 5 times 3m to the power of negative 4. Any of your large numbers, the 4 and the 3, times them together, first of all. So that would just become 12. If you have m to the negative 5 times m to the negative 4, what do you do? Well, when you're timesing, you just add the indices. So it's m to the power of negative 5, add negative 4. Just remember, when you add a negative, you're subtracting. So it'd be 12m to the power of negative 9. Next one, x to the power of 4 thirds divided by 5x to the power of 1 third. So here, let's leave the 5 where it is just now and think we've got an x to the power of 4 thirds. We're dividing it by x to the power of 1 third. And when you're doing that, you subtract. So you'd end up with x to the power of 4 thirds minus 1 third. And the 5 would stay on the bottom of the fraction. If you work that out, 4 thirds take away 1 third third you could picture that but really the denominators are the same so you're just subtracting the numerators so it's x to the power of three thirds again over five and three thirds makes one whole so it's just x to the power of one over five or just x to the power of five this last one, again, it looks like one of these mental examples. But to do this, you can either think about foil. You're really just multiplying out the brackets. You can multiply the brackets, think foil, think rainbows, whichever way you like to do it. But if you have a 3 over the square root of x times x, well, you can put the 3 and the x together. So it would be 3x over uh, the square root of x. 3 over root x times root x. Well, the root x will go in the top, so it'll be plus 3 root x over root x. Negative 2 times x gives you negative 2x, and negative 2 times root x gives you negative 2 root x. Trying to simplify that a wee bit, well, with this bit here, you're thinking that's 3x to the power of 1. You're dividing it by root x. Remember, root x is x to the power of a half. So really, we've got 3x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of 1 half. And what you do is when you divide, when the base is the same, it's you subtract the indices. So it's x to the power of 1, take away x to the power of a half. Uh, really, it's just the indices that you are subtracting. So 1, take away a half. So 3x to the power of a half is what you'd be left with. I are 3 root x. The next one, well, you've got a root x in the top and in the bottom, so you can cancel them out. Really, you would have x to the power of a half, take away a half uh, with the indices. So a half take away a half is zero, so it's x to the power of zero, which is just one, leaving you just with three. As I said, though, you can just cancel out. The negative 2x would stay as negative 2x, and the negative 2 root x would stay as negative 2 root x. With the terms here, see if you can simplify any. Well, really, with the root x's, you've got three root x, and you're taking away two root x, so you're only left with one root x. The plus three, well, there's no other numbers on their own, so that would stay as plus three, and the minus two x would stay as minus two x. That's how you would do that one.
Could I let you try some of these questions in the Maths in Action book, page 62, exercise 3. Check your answers as you go. Make sure you do every single question. Make sure you're getting them right. As I said, you do have to be an expert at indices before you move on with a differentiation. Good luck. Give me a shout if you need a hand.